happy to be here with you this morning for the graduation ceremony of Officer Cadet Course Intake 25 of the Ghana Prison Service. I believe I'm not alone in expressing shock at the distressing images we see circulating on social media about our overcrowded prisons. Our prisons with a capacity for 9,875 inmates have exceeded their capacity nationally by some 48%. We need to do something about these figures and my government is determined to do so. Under the program, two projects, namely the construction of a 2,000 capacity remand prison at Insawong and the expansion of residential accommodation for staff at Anchor 4 Maximum Security Prison have been started. I want to assure the prison service that even though these projects have stalled, government will get the contractors back on site very soon so that these projects are completed and operationalized. The number of medical personnel assigned to the service has also been increased and shortly all prison infirmaries across the country will be upgraded and adequately resourced. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in addition to providing logistical and infrastructural support to the service, government has also given clearance for the recruitment of 1,000 young men and women to augment the staff strength of the service. I can assure you also that under my watch as President of the Republic, the laws of this land will be applied to the letter and without recourse to the ethnic, religious or political affiliations of the persons or persons involved. And to those who are sending chiefs and men of God to the special prosecutor to intervene on their behalf to try to dissuade Mr. Martin Amidou from conducting his investigations. From the little I know of the man, they are engaged in a fruitless venture. getting into the merits and demerits of the prosperity gospel that appears to the main theme for many of our present day churches. The good Lord knows I preach prosperity myself and I do not want this country and its people to be poor and I am very much for wealth creation. But the difficult truth is that once you get into the wealth and prosperity sphere, you necessarily slip into the tax and accounting language. The public looks on, its priests compete to show who is the more powerful and who is the richer. The public looks on, and some of the churches appear to forget about the poor and the vulnerable in our society and concentrate on being outrageous. It is not surprising that there are calls for taxes to be imposed on church income. When you step out of the charity sphere, out of education, and out of healthcare, you're putting yourself in the line of the tax man. I do not hesitate to state openly that I am a Christian in politics and will continue to be so. A, poli a politician who's deeply influenced by Christian values. It is in all our interests that we pull our resources together to build a happy and prosperous nation. I know that the church can be very influential and make a dramatic difference in education, in health, and in sanitation. The same enthusiasm that you are able to marshal to grow and increase your numbers, that same enthusiasm can help to build Ghana. 
Let us join hands together and build the happy and prosperous Ghana we all want. It is well within our reach. And let me assure that this government has no plans to change the law on same-sex marriage. We have no authority, and we will not seek any authority to do so. 